The noise is deafening, the stench worse, but locals are powerless to get rid of them unless they break the law. This is like from the we horror movie. Them, and it was like a bat tornado over the town. That's how bad it was. It just seems to me that every bat in Australia is now in England. It's a town under siege. Overrun by bats that outnumber the population by hundreds of thousands. It just stinks. It, it stinks. Infiltrating every corner of the town and putting lives at risk. What was your biggest fear when you got scratched? Um, am I going to die? Like, what's going to happen? Get rid of the bats. We, we've, we've had enough. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's been going on for way too long. It's mid-morning in Ingham in North Queensland and in the centre of the normally quiet town, there's a cacophony of screeches. The problem that we're having is that we're, we're seemingly being in, uh, influxed by more and more animals and the roost cannot handle it. The botanical gardens are overrun with bats. Every inch of every branch is covered with them. Mayor Raymond Jayo says they've now reached biblical plague proportions. It's a nightmare. It, it is a nightmare. It's truly disgusting. Some of the trees are so full of bats, they're constantly breaking from the sheer weight of them. The bus stop, footpaths, even the town's cenotaph are covered in bat faeces. But at night, it's far worse. This is what locals here have to put up with every day. There's hundreds of thousands of bats flying around. The noise is horrendous and the smell is putrid and lingers long after the bats have flown away for the evening. This can last up to an hour and is repeated every morning when they return. If you come up here and had a look and had to try to uh, live in this area, it would drive you insane. As the colony grows, so do concerns for local welfare. The bats have recently moved into trees at the local kindergarten and primary school. Adam and Suzanne Carilla are born and bred in town. Their two daughters, Ella and Adam, go to the school. We love our little town and we love our school. And it's just not OK, because yeah, I've been very sure. stressed out about it. They're now part of a growing group of parents considering pulling their children out of school for fear of them getting sick or being scratched by a diseased bat. They're not stepping a foot in that ground until something is that we know is being done. Sometimes you just feel like a little kid's just going to throw a rock at them and stir them up and just, you might get scratched. The problem here in Ingham has become so bad, emergency helicopters can no longer land here at the hospital while the bats are in flight, with the main colony just a few hundred metres down the road. Recently, a chopper was forced to do laps of the town until the bats cleared. During these heat events, when they're dropping dead, they're not just dying in the gardens, they're dying wherever they're flying at the time. Raquel Coco is the president of the local Chamber of Commerce. She says businesses are forced to clean up after the bats every morning. Tourism is also taking a hit. If this was happening at Parliament House, somebody would have come up with a solution by now. You see, the bats are considered a protected species under state law, meaning there's little council can do to try and move them on. They can use non-lethal methods like smoke, noise and lights that can't be done when the bats are breeding. Because there's four different species and because they all have young at different times, there's hardly a, a window of opportunity. Nearly 250 kilometres away, Charters Towers knows the struggle. The local park is now permanently closed due to safety risks overrun by bats. No one knows that risk more so than Cody Rouge and his mother Renee. We'll listen to music and the next minute the like, bat just drops out of the tree and like hits the table. And as it was coming up, it must have like, scratched me or something. I went like that to get it off me. Renee, this is the park where it happened. There aren't any bats that we can see now. Is that normal? Um, so th this park, uh, yeah, usually doesn't have no bats in here. That's why I said it was safe for Cody to come here. These extraordinary videos were taken by locals during a roosting season. Unless you're here and seeing it, it is incredible. We shouldn't be living like this. 
Cody had to be taken to hospital after he was scratched to receive the vaccine, requiring him to have 11 injections. And what was your biggest fear when you got scratched? Um, am I going to die? Like, what's going to happen? Yeah. That thought went through your mind? Yeah. What type of impact has it had on Cody over the past year? Cody doesn't like to go out after dark. Scared he's going to get scratched by a bat and go through the whole ordeal again. The biggest concern with diseased bats is the Lyssa virus, a rabies-like disease that's contracted via bites and scratches. In Australia, there's been three confirmed cases of bat Lyssa virus in humans. All three were fatal. There's no question that flying foxes do carry some diseases, but you have to actually be scratched or bitten by the animal for that to be transferred to the human. Des Boyland is from the Wildlife Preservation Society of Queensland. He says bats are essential to our ecosystem and the risk of disease is low. If people value forests and our woodlands, then bats are absolutely essential. And moving a colony on is easier said than done. Dispersing bats is, is, an, is very costly and also it's rarely very successful. Local federal member Bob Catter is well aware of that. He's been trying to move the bats from Charters Towers for years. Me? Well, I'd be down here with a shotgun. Now the bats are killing us, but we're not allowed to kill them. He believes the community has now reached breaking point. But there comes a point where uh, I think you know, not breaking the law really becomes dogging it, as we say in North Queensland. And I think that point has probably been reached. It's not a way to live, is it? No, it's not. It's, um, it's really sad. Like, I can get very emotional about it. It's really sad that we have to put up with this and deal with it. The council will spend $250,000 of ratepayer money to try and disperse the bats before next summer.